Hi everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyrography for Beginners. Uh, the latest piece we're working on was this muscular viking. I'll just leave the reference image up for a moment where you can see the transfer lines that I've put on. I have made a start on the viking. Uh, just trying to get a feel for the piece. At the moment, I've been looking at his shield um, and how we can add effect of some depth to it. With these straps that are on the shield, they're curling over and down into the shield. There's like a ridge that runs all the way along here with some buckles. So we're going to look with a different tool to uh, put the buckles in because we need something really small to put the buckles on. But at the minute I'm just shading up these straps of the shield to make them appear like they're falling away into the shield. We do this just by shading. We see it, if we it's it's like blending your shading down. The darker you go, the further down something will look. So it's very much a case of layering up until you get the right look that you're looking for. I mean, you can shape them uh, you know, in any way you want. This is a leather strap, so sorry, the dogs are playing up. <laughs> So as, as you can see, I've started building a ridge all along this edge because it's following this line. Start putting a step in so this bottom piece in effect is sat inwards. you'll see as I go what look we're trying to achieve and don't forget we've got this axe that is standing much more forward so the shield will have to be darker than the axe for the axe to appear closer to us but we'll get to that way down the line I've got, I'm using the extra small spare shader from the Optima at the minute and the setting is at about one and a half. Get the smaller the pen tip, the less heat setting you need on your machine. So if I was to have this setting, say with a large flat round shader, it would barely put any heat onto the wood but because this pen tip is so small it holds heat much more so we have to turn the heat down and it may even need to go lower than this yet then one point of reference that we can add a bit of depth is places like this underneath the strap 
where there'd be even less light get into that area we can put a really dark patch and if you see if you just put a really dark bit at the edge it gives the appearance that this piece of leather is actually sat up from there and there's a space in between so that's one way we can start showing depth is adding like shadows so if you think about as we move round the piece and if this is a leather strap then it stands to reason on the outside of the leather strap right underneath it there will be less light get into that particular area so we can go much darker and then it's also dropping away again there's this ridge here continues round but it's going off into the distance is the shield it's set on an angle so your angles start to change as you move round this lip I've been building the angle has to change doesn't it you know with the perception of the eye to give it an effect that it's looking like it's not just a flat object you have to change your angles I'm going to turn this heat down to number one on the pen at the moment because the heat is controlling me at the minute and I need to control the heat and that, that's a very important lesson is you always want to be in control of the heat and not the heat in control of you if you find it's burning too hot then just turn the heat down and find the level that you've got control again over the heat and at the moment I'm using the pen tip so there's more heat in the tip as you can see on number one I'm still getting quite a dark uh, burn a shade So it's definitely something you need to look out for when you're changing your tips because there are many different kinds of tip that we can use to create our pyrography art. Uh, every tip has its own unique sort of settings and it's the things it does and you'll learn that over time as you practice with your tips. This is quite a new one, that uh, Pat with the Optima. I think this is one of his newer designs, is this extra small spear shader. He designed it because we'd found these uh, nut slices called Tawa nuts. And he designed these pens for like micro burning. So you could burn on a much smaller scale, you know, like the Peter Child machines where they have really small pen tips. We may utilise Peter Child for some of these really small studs because them super fine wire tips would be perfect for doing these studs. Now, of course the shield has to have an edge so we can just dab away pulling inwards 
just to put the line across where the where the pencil line is that I've marked in at the moment. As we go, we rub out the pencil lines. But to start with as reference points, we keep those lines in so we know our boundaries. You know, there's nothing wrong with having lots of pencil lines everywhere so you, you know where you can burn up to. And then when you're finished with them, when you don't need them anymore, just get your rubber and rub them out. As you go. And you'll find as you rub it out, what you've burnt that look darker actually lightens up as you remove the graphite. So we can start rubbing out this edge to the shield because we've got a light shade in for the edge to it so we don't need that graphite anymore and we'll do a, a, a more intense uh, array is in afterwards to remove it fully the graphite So we've got to remember this axe handle is coming down, sitting forward. So here, let's say just you know along the edge of the axe handle, we'll have to go all the shield a darker shade than that to give it the appearance of it sat further back okay so I so said all this shield will have to go darker set back from the axe handle so as we've got points what we've got here is the edge to the leather strap that goes around the outside of the shield. So I've just marked that with a darker dab just to uh, show that there's an edge to the value there. Because even both sides will have an edge. This is another strap. So the underneath as well will still have a break off point. This is why I'm using this extra small spatiator at the minute because this when you're working on smaller pieces it can get quite intricate and very time consuming to work it I'd, I'd say it's harder to work on a smaller piece than it is a larger one because you're trying to cram the detail into a much smaller space than what you would normally. So definitely smaller artwork is more, well, to me it's more difficult because I'm having to try and cram the detail into much tighter spaces. And normally I'd like to have done this portrait on an A4 board and much bigger. But 
I picked this size so I'm going with it as you use your reference pictures and stuff to work from reference pictures remember can only be like a guide you don't have to if you're just doing a piece for fun or whatever you don't have to stick rigidly to the image you see you can use your own artistic design or your own incorporate your own ideas into it the reference picture is just there really as a guide You know, we don't have to follow it exactly to every single line. Remove that bits of rubber. It worked well, you see, with wood burning this because leather is like a tan brown colour, isn't it? So. I thought this leather shield would look quite good if we can get the detail right on it. I've got to capture all the ridges and Give it some shape. Now as you go off into the distance, the detail you can say, you know, as the shield is on an angle, the detail back here just becomes less and less seen, you know, as it's sat further back. You don't need to worry about going into the super fine detail that you do on the closer up part. So we'll look at that later anyway and see if we just, we don't need to worry about all these buckles that I know I've marked in. You might not be able to see them on the um, video, but there are buckles that I've marked. And maybe we don't need to well, we definitely won't be adding them into the far off edge. Or if we do, it'll be very minor. But let's finish putting a boundary in. This, of course, is sat in front of the warrior's pants. So it was another opportunity for us to show depth. Because let's have a quick look now. Let me just turn the picture out. Okay, so here where his pants lie next to the shield it's much darker to push the pants back I mean this is a ruffle of fabric here so underneath be less light getting there so we can put just darker spots in at the moment and we're not over committing ourselves and if we remember we need to keep turning 
or barred as we need. Never, you don't need to work cat handed as I call it. I don't know if you call it that in other places, but cat handed is when you can't get at things properly and you need to move it. Just move the board round. I'm not going to go into too great detail on these pants yet. But this is just one point where we can show depth. Just by adding that darker shade gives the appearance of it being sat back from the shield. On the picture it's not sat that far back but it is behind the shield isn't it Now here where it meets the body as well, we want to really put a darker line. So we're going to have to change all the values of the shield. If we want the shield to stand out from the body, then it has to be a different value to this part of the skin and some more of the leather strap so again under the edge there's less light getting there so We can add touches of darker areas to give the effect that this is sitting on top of the rest of the shield. Then again, here on this end, if we go darker outside of the shield, outside of this strap, that negative burning, this is called, I suppose. Negative burning can sometimes give a more realistic look to something. We will do some future videos on negative burning. Something you do need to study if you're looking for realism. So we've got control over the heat of the pen now. I'm much happier with it at this heat. We're only on one, which shows we're really low on the setting.
I think when you when you're trying to show something falling away this is where you call your blending coming in you go from light to light lighter to darker to darker to darker to dark at the bottom Remember the darker you put something, the further you sit it down, more you push it down. So we'd start off lighter up here, and then as we want it to fall away. moving in the direction if you want to fold it in a little into the buckle there's going to be a buckle here and then if we think about the buckle which not sure if we're going to be able to do with this pen. There would be a really dark point underneath it. We're going to have to change pens. Look what we've got. We need something much smaller. Right, okay. This is a writing tip pen. Don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's quite small. I've not used this one as yet. We'll put it onto the other pen holder, switch it on. Give it a minute to heat up, and you can see it's a lot smaller. than the extra small spare shader let me just actually heat it for a second and it oxidise them or something when you heat them up because I haven't used this pen tip yet just turn it up glowing red for a second and then turn it back down let's test it on a darker area That should work. For putting in the super fine detail of the buckle. Well, you could do with magnifying glasses or something. When you're working on something so small, I think my wife did give me a pair of these crazy glasses. So when I get real close, I don't want to. No, I can't use them because they obscure your view. I'd have to get my head right in. <laughs> And this is only if you go in over the top. The 
the detail. You don't have to do this. You can just experiment and see what this tip does. It, like I said, it is a writing tip, but it's very, very fine. And I can move it on a nice angle. It's not gripping. So it looks like it could be a good pen to use for putting buckles in. See all along here. these brass buckles you don't have to add them but I did pencil them in in the edge of them or go in this way yeah it's not a bad little pen this one I've only got it on heat setting one because it is a super fine tip you know, you really turn the setting down. If you turned this up to even two, you would get the blob. You get the black blob, and that's what you don't want. The blob. The blob is when you get like just a singe of heat. Definitely something you all pyrographers want to avoid is the blob. Let's have a look what it's like for marking out their edges of shadow, the break points between the straps. This is more like a pencil. It's, it's a little bit bigger than the Peter Child uh, wire tips, you know, them spear wire tips in the Peter Child machine, it's slightly bigger. No, because I have got a Peter Child machine as well. Just haven't used it for a while. And I thought it may be needed on this piece. Because I know I started having a look at the eyes yesterday and I put the extra small spear shader on and it went ultra dark there. So there's a correction got to be made either with sandpaper or we'll see if we can make adjustments. I'm not sure. See if you get to the far side of the shield in the distance. You don't need to put as much detail, you can just put little dabs. Yep, yeah, that would look nice. Let's see what it is. It is the 9M 
modified writing tip, symmetrical. So the pH 9M, this pen tip, this pen is from the Optima. So I don't know if I told you on a previous video at Christmas, uh, they did a raffle for on one of the Facebook pyrography groups, a Christmas giveaway. And the first prize was $200 of credit with Optima or an Optima machine with a couple of pens. I already had the Optima Jewel, so I got $200 of credit, which was very kind of them. I was very lucky to win it. And I think I got something like 11 or 13 pens with my $200 win. So me and Pat went through different options of pens he'd send me to try out. And this was one of them. It's not bad, is it? You can get quite small detail in with that. That's the thing I like about um, the Optima. This so he makes so many pens. Does Pat is he? He's like a, he is an inventor of pen tips as well. He's always creating new pens for different looks and different th you know wood burnings that you do in different pyrography art. He's always looking to expand his range of uh, products. Now the, the, the thing I didn't, uh, wasn't impressed with, with the Peter Child was there were no variety of pen tip either. There's just that spear and the spoon shader. I, mean, I know it's the UK leading machine is the uh, Peter Child but there's just not enough they don't focus enough on pen tips it seems like they make these machines give you some little spare tips and that's it Well, I'm quite impressed with that for adding little uh, buckles on. That's a good little pen. Just putting it darker at the bottom of this buckle. Because if you think about it, with the, where the light would be casting, if you want to, like it's studded into this strap, put a dark line at the bottom. Let's see what effect it gives. This may work as well, you know, for the beard and the hair. We'll have to have a, a time lapse look at that. The time will be on the video twenty seven. 
paused it once as well so we'll go for another 10 minutes right so we'll leave that pen for a minute and switch back so there's wires everywhere switch back to the extra small space shader don't mind dabbing away while it's heating up it's only on setting one and a bit still I've left it on the same setting I've just had that really small ball tip on so I don't want to burn all the shield like way too dark Otherwise you lose any like sort of detail you want to put in. If you do the whole thing too dark, you lose detail. As you see by putting these sort of like dab lines here we're now creating a lip you know around like each stud that's been hammered in on this buckle What you will do in, with time is then sort of shade in around each stud. I love doing the super fine detail. All right, make your eyes water. It's a lot more time consuming, but just challenge yourself. Push it to see how far you can push yourself. And I have no idea what end result we're going to get with this warrior. It's just a different challenge than an animal. I don't know how many times I can say I've burnt a shield. It never up to now, so it's a new experience. You can start seeing the effect anyway. I'll zoom in there and you can start seeing the effect of the buckles. You can add a good bit of detail there with that small writing pen. A good practice piece this to experiment with some of the tips that he gave me so 
remember if you want to show something falling away lighter darker 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 And here, for example, you could put like a crease line as it's all getting clamped into this buckle, to this stud, should I say. So you can move your, move your burning. down into it need more refining yet yeah, but you can see the effect you're starting to pull the leather strap down to that buckle because with We've got to show a clean edge. To the strap. It's a negative burn. To try and show a clean edge to it. If you think about all underneath here, there's less light getting in. I'm just dotting with the very tip of the pen. Doorbell going. Just okay, sorry about that, everybody. Just a delivery. It's crazy, isn't it? Every time I try and do a video, either the doorbell goes or my phone rings. But this video just shows just how far you can go. I know we haven't, you know, we haven't really done much today, have we? But it's a look at how in-depth detail you can go if you wish. You know, try and push yourself and. Just experiment with different shadings, different pen tips. And just push yourself and see what you can do.
And I don't think we're going to put a great, you know, lip on this outside edge of this shield. We're not going to like build like a thick edge to it. It does have a little ridge, but we're not going to put a really thick one in. There's another thing to think about when, if you're putting a, like a, a rim, as it falls away, you're not going to see the rim anymore, are you? You'll see it here and here, and here, but you're not going to see it on the far end because that's the offside. So if you're adding a rim to your shield, or like an edge to it, it's only going to be shown on the near side of the piece. And again, it doesn't look like I'm actually doing much, but I'm just building the value I want slowly. You know, I've got the control then. So you could get to a certain point with it and realise, actually, I don't need to go any further than that. And you can stop but if you had the heat setting too high you haven't got that opportunity it takes it away from you if you have your heat too high Pulling all that leather down into that buckle, into that stud, I keep saying buckle, is a stud. And then depending what detail you want to go in, like I said, you can just put dark crease lines I mean you won't really when you look at the piece people won't really see that unless you want to examine it up close but you'll know it's there is this has changed in value now so much so much this it has to go darker if we've gone if we've darkened this to near the same darkness as a shadow the shadow has to go darker so you see how burning one thing affects what you did previously As you keep burning, you shadowing in, all your values keep changing all the time, all your perception keeps changing. And you have to accommodate for anything that you've done around the area. You then have to accommodate for it. 
by darkening off your other values that you've already set. It's a shame we couldn't have videoed this whole piece live, but it just take too long and you'd all get sick and tired of listening to me. So, sadly, that's what time lapse is for, isn't it? As you can see, I've actually done it, but you don't have to sit through all the hours of me dotting and dabbing. <laughs> Okay, so we've touched on a few things there today. Edges to value, you know, putting a clean edge as a breaker point. We've started thinking about where there's less light coming to the edge of this leather strap that's running all around the shield. You know, right under here where I'm dabbing now, there's less light getting to there. So we go darker to push that in. And then we've started looking at some buckles with that brilliant uh, PH9M writing tip. And we've started looking. putting some shape to the shield with all these studs we've got our rim set that we're gonna shade off if you think about this one that we've started this one has to be the same you know pulling in to that stud We've thought about just the thin outside edge of the object and how much of it we'll see. We will only see it really to say somewhere here coming round with an edge. We'll see it all the way around here but on the offside we won't see any of the top of the shield so that's all the things that we've got going on in the minds while we're just working on something as simple as a shield okay so we'll leave it there for today I'll put it on time lapse and I'll carry on working on these buckles and straps and we'll see what we end up with so thanks for tuning in guys everybody stay safe take care thank you very much for watching i really appreciate you sharing your valuable time with me i hope that there was something there for you to think about today and we've seen how we can get into really fine detail with different pen tips and looks that we can do with a pyrography. So I'll continue working now on time lapse and I'll post up another video when we start doing the beard. And I'm going to do a video on this arm guard, video on the pants, and definitely we'll do a video on the axe and the hair okay right i'll say goodbye for now take care everybody thanks for watching don't forget to hit like subscribe leave a comment feel free love to hear 
from any of you what you'd like to see uh, wood burning of you know things that maybe you're struggling with or you'd like to look at in more detail if you leave a comment then that's it because I do burn every day we can look at lots of different subjects so feel free to leave me a comment okay take care for now thanks guys bye